Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship and a very special welcome to any visitors we have with us today. Uh, we hope that for everyone, our worship will be an encounter with the loving and living Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few brief announcements before we begin. Uh, the first of which is that next Sunday, we do uh, resume our sort of uh, uh, regular schedule uh, with worship at 8.15 and 10 o'clock. So we are staying at 10 uh, for the late service, but um, for those early birds, um, I know we got some uh, farmers and other people here that, that 10 o'clock is late in the day. And um, if you wish to join us at 8.15, you are more than welcome to, and we'll look forward to seeing you at 8.15 or 10 o'clock next Sunday. And also, you might have noticed up here, um, we are collecting a special offering today uh, for Hurricane Ida relief, and uh, this will go to Lutheran Disaster Response. So uh, later I will invite you, or after the service, if you wish to um, make a cash offering, or you can write a check uh, payable to Good Shepherd and just put Hurricane Relief in the memo line. And then also next Sunday, um, September 12th, is uh, God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, which is a relatively new tradition in the, in the ELCA, uh, where it's all of our uh, ELCA congregations across the country are engaging in a day of service, of community service. And so, of course, here in the Perry Conference, we are delighted to welcome our sister congregations as we assemble 500 Lutheran World Relief Hygiene Kits. So essentially, these are kits with like a towel, a comb, a couple bars of soap, toothbrush, and that you wrap up the towel, and then they go around the world to people that are in need. Um, so people that are refugees and need some of the basic uh, elements of hygiene, this, these kits will, will go to help them to do that. So anyhow, that's next Sunday if you wish to help us. Um, we're looking for a few extra volunteers. We have a light luncheon at 12.30 with sandwiches and chips and things, and then we will begin making the health kits at 1 o'clock. So hope to see you there. It's always a lot of fun, a uh, great way to, to help out our, our neighbors in need. There are several other announcements in the bulletin I'll invite you to read at your leisure, uh, but those are all the announcements I have for now. Are there any other announcements or prayer requests for the prayers of intercession for today. Okay. Thank you, Vi. Kelly? Sure. Would you like me to announce it? Or Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, just it is easier for everyone to hear, but so... Uh, Next, not this, not, yeah, a week from today. No, two weeks from today. Yes, thank you. Okay. Two weeks from today, September 19th, uh, is the memorial service and celebration of life uh, for Kelly's late mother. Um, I know she was dear to all of us, Phyllis Ernest. Um, remind me again, I, I have it on my calendar, but it's... Yes, one, one to two is the visitation, and the service is at two, followed by a time of a luncheon or fellowship meal afterwards. So we'll, we'll, have, we'll get them in the bulletin for next week, but uh, please do uh, come and be with us and Kelly and Holly and the family as we thank God for Phyllis's life and celebrate her. So thank you, Kelly. Any other announcements or prayer requests? Of course, we can always pray later on as the Spirit moves us. But seeing no further, I would invite you, if you are able, to, to please rise for the brief, brief order for confession and forgiveness that is found in the bulletin. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart.
God our Comforter. Like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. And now I invite you, if you wish to sing, to uh, don a mask um, out of an abundance of caution. And if you wish to sing, join me in singing from the green hymnal, hymn 543, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Amen. 
The first lesson is a reading from the 35th chapter of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And the burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Here ends the first lesson. Psalm 146 printed in your bulletin will be read responsibly. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who are. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow, the prostrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second lesson is a reading from the second chapter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law's transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Here ends the second lesson.
If you are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now, the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. I'll invite the children down for a moment. Well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Yeah, (laughs) so quiet. (laughs) So um, anyone give an apple to their teacher this week after our conversation last week? No, still none. Angie, no apples? Still none? All right, all right. Well, anyway, um, you know, boys and girls, I was just wondering, this might sound like a funny question, but what are some of your favorite sounds to listen to? Do you have any sounds that you like? (laughs) Music, video games. (laughs) You mostly like to play video games. What about the sound of like rain on your roof? Do you like that sound? I like to lie in bed and hear that sound. Any, Any favorite sounds you like? None? All right, I guess not, wow, okay. Well, (laughs) I was hoping you would say something, because what I was going to ask you to do is to imagine what it would be like if you couldn't hear any of those sounds which you enjoy so much. But, you know, for a lot of people, that's, that's the way things are, that for people who are deaf, they can't hear, or maybe they can't hear very well. Whoops, Nathan, you want to sit up, buddy? So all these things that we enjoy listening to our neighbors and friends who are, are deaf wouldn't be able to enjoy that. You know, so how do you think people that can't hear communicate? Any ideas? Sign language. Yeah, definitely. That's one of the main ways. Do any of you know any sign? Uh, Carly's doing a little sign language. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for listening and answering my question. Do any of you know any other sign language? You want to sit up? Well, I'm going to teach you a couple things real quick so we can think about that for a minute. But the first thing I'm going to teach you is, what are you supposed to say if you want someone to do something for you? I'll give you a clue. It starts with the P. Please, all right. <laughs> Boy, some of these kids uh, don't learn, no, don't know these things, huh? So the way that you say please in sign language, do you like this first? Put your hand up like this. Nathan, can you sit up, buddy? All right. 
And then you put your hand on your chest, and it's like a circular motion, like this. That's how you say please in sign language, right? Just like that, very simple, okay? And then what do you do, what do you say if someone does something for you, something nice? Ashley? Yeah, thank you. So in sign language, thank you is like this. You put your hand on your chin, and then, do, so just let me see you do like this. Put your hand on your chin, and then thank you. That's how you say thank you. And if you want to say thank you very much, you use both hands. Thank you very much, right? And then to say you're welcome, you do your hand like this, and you just put it on your chest right here, just like this. Well, anyway, the reason I'm telling you all this is that in this morning's story, Jesus was helping a man that was deaf who couldn't hear and also had trouble speaking. And I think part of our job as Christians is to make sure that we try to... Nathan, can you sit over here, buddy? (laughs) Come a little closer. All right. I think part of our job as Christians is to try to listen and communicate with people that might not be able to speak. That's all right. You can sit next to her. (laughs) To listen and communicate with people that might not be able to do it very well. So now today, you learned how to say three things. I'm going to quiz you next Sunday on how to say please, thank you, and you're welcome in sign language, okay? All right. (laughs) Let's say a quick prayer together. Uh, Dear God, I thank you for these children, for their faith, and for their kindness. And I pray, Lord, that you will help all of us um, as Christians to reach out to our neighbors who, at some, for different reasons, might have uh, difficulty communicating and that you will use us uh, to listen and to talk with them. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, boys and girls. Have a seat. (laughs) I once heard a story uh, about an older man that he was living with his family And he had basically gone completely deaf. He had lost pretty much all of his hearing. And uh, this had gone on for a couple years. Um, And he was living with his family. And one day he decided to go to the doctor and get this checked out. So the doctor got him some hearing aids. And his hearing was was basically restored to to normal. And so the man went home, uh, back to his family. A couple weeks later, um, he went back to the doctor for a follow-up appointment, and the doctor said, wow, you can hear now? I mean, your family must be so happy. And the man said, oh, I didn't tell my family yet. He said, I've just been been listening to them. I've just been listening to their conversations, and I've changed my will three times. (laughs) So I also uh, also heard a story once about a a young boy. Uh, He was six years old, and he had never made a peep let alone spoken a word in six years. And uh, everyone assumed that he was mute, that he couldn't speak. And then one day, um, the the six-year-old boy was eating breakfast, um, and he he leaped up and said, Mommy, these sausages are not cooked all the way through. And the mom mom ran over, and she's like, Oh, my Lord. She's like, You can speak? Why haven't you said anything for six years? And he was like, Well, up to now, everything was pretty good. So, I jest, you know, I, I la- I, we joke and I, I ask your forgiveness because obviously we shouldn't make fun of people or laugh about people that have hearing problems or have speech problems. I mean, certainly th- this is a real thing that people face in their lives. And um, I remember just a few years ago, this is actually a true story now, but um, I was very privileged to do the funeral for a local man that I had never met before. And uh, this is a man who grew up in Millerstown. Um, He was a good old-fashioned Perry County boy, uh, fishing, and he played in the band and scouts and all that good stuff. And he graduated from the Greenwood High School. And um, and then he started to work for Bethlehem Steel. Um, And when he was in his, like, early 20s, um, he got sick and he went deaf. He lost his hearing. Um, This man's name was Larry Straub. And uh, his funeral was in February of 2020. It was actually on, his funeral was on Shrove Tuesday, the day before 
Ash Wednesday, and then it was like a month later was the, the shutdown for everything. But anyhow, so Larry was working for Bethlehem Steel. He got sick, and doctors suspect it was this rare disease called Kogan's syndrome that caused him to lose his hearing. And so here he is. He's like 20 years old. He was this bright, promising young man who went deaf. And not knowing what to do with himself, um, he heard about Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., which maybe you've heard of before. Before. It's a federally chartered university for the deaf and hard of hearing. So he, he went down to uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, the town where I grew up. So I joked at the funeral that he was, he was born in Perry County and moved to Silver Spring. And now here I am, born in Silver Spring, moved up to Perry County. But, um, and he studied accounting. He was good with numbers. He studied accounting. And he then went to work at the university and had a long and su successful career at Gallaudet University um, working in their accounting department and had children and grandchildren and all these things. And so really amazing story about overcoming adversity um, in life and, and uh, you know, doing the best you can in difficult circumstances. But I thought recently, you know, what if, what if Larry had been born like 100 years or 200 years before 1950 when he was born? You know, um, I was reading an article recently from the National Park Service that talked about in colonial times in America that when people had disabilities, usually it was up to the, the towns that they had either like a workhouse or work farms, and people would leave their families um, and go live in these kind of, you know, dormitories or places. They were often not the best conditions and try to learn some sort of skill or trade or work on a farm. And it wasn't until later on, until like the early 1800s, when physicians started to advocate for a more humane treatment for people that were, were blind or, or deaf or mute and um, started to you know, treat them more like human beings and, and treat them with, with, uh, give them the opportunity to learn job skills and things like this. And so the reason I mention all this is that you know, thinking about this story today, um, we, have, we have two people in this story uh, that Jesus heals, or, you know, one is the daughter of the Syroph Syrophoenician woman, and the second is this man um, who is deaf and mute. Um, and we think about how people with disabilities were treated in this country up until relatively recently, not that, not that well, which was the case all around the world. But in Jesus' day, it was, was even more so. You know, I mean, if someone was, was, was mute or, or deaf or hard of hearing, people thought the person was, you know, demon-possessed or the parents had done some terrible thing and were being punished by the gods and things like this. And so in this story, Jesus is really, by healing these people, by touching them, um, by, by having a conversation with them and listening to them, Jesus is breaking all kinds of, of the social taboos that existed in his day. You know, last week we had this story where the disciples of Jesus were criticized for not washing their hands properly. And Jesus, you know, said, it's not, it's not what goes into you that makes you unclean, it's what comes out. And uh, thus he, he declared all foods to be clean, right? And in this morning's story, I think Jesus is declaring all people, all kinds of people to be clean and good. Um, you know, your worth as a person is not determined by whether or not you have a disability or whether or not you're a man or woman or whether or not you're of one ethnicity or another. Um, the Syrophoenician woman, you know, when Jesus first began his ministry, he said that he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet, for whatever reason, he chose to go out of Galilee and go to this place, Tyre, uh, this, this, this foreign land that's full of Gentiles. He wants no one to know he's there. Um, it tells us he was hiding sort of in this house. But this woman who's desperate because her young daughter is sick comes to him to seek healing. You know, she believes that he is a man of God who is able to cure her daughter of this, of this illness. And I think Jesus was testing her just a little bit, right, when he has this blind about, you know, we don't want to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. I think he was just kind of testing her to see, 
to see what she would say. And then what did she say? That even, even the dogs under the table eat the crumbs, right? And um, I think she's saying, you know, you know, Jesus, you know, you know that God's mercy is for more than just the Israelites. This is, what I, this is what the woman's telling him. I believe this, and you know that God's mercy is for all people, not just, not just for one, one ethnic group. And that's when Jesus says, for saying that, <laughs> you may go. Um, and she finds her daughter well and healed. But how many of us, by the way, too, think of their dogs as a member of the family? <laughs> I know many of us do, right? <laughs> um, but anyway... Uh, this man who is deaf and mute, um, you know, Jesus heals him. He, he actually physically touches him. With, there's a whole another taboo about touching people who are, who are unclean or have any kind of disability and, and tells and says to him, be opened. And his ears are opened, his tongue is loosened, and he's able to hear and to speak plainly, only to have Jesus tell him, don't tell anyone what just happened. But what does he do? He tells, he tells everybody. He tells everybody. I think when God does good things in our lives, when God really touches us in a way that changes things, we are eager and excited to share this news with people. I don't know if you remember, but there was a movie that came out. I think it came out in 1989 or 1990. Um, it was a movie starring uh, the actor Daniel Day-Lewis, um, and the movie was called My Left Foot. Did anyone ever see that movie? <laughs> so it's a great movie if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. But uh, it's based on a true story where Daniel Day-Lewis plays um, a man named Christy Brown. And Christy Brown was an Irish man. He was born in 1930 in Dublin, and he was born with cerebral palsy. He had like 13 siblings. It was poor family, as you can imagine, and this man, Christy Brown, had severe cerebral palsy so that the only part of his body he could really control was his left leg, right? And over the years, a social worker was visiting him at his home, and she would bring these books, and she noticed that he had a love of art and a love of poetry. And so before long, he got the idea that he could start drawing and painting with his left foot. And as it turned out, he was actually quite a talented artist. He made some really beautiful paintings, and he wrote poetry, and um, had a phenomenal life. You know, but had he lived in a different time, and actually even, even during that, even, even in the 1930s when he was a child, people were telling them, no, you should send your son off to one of those, like, you know, one of those places for people that are disabled, and he'll never amount to much, you know, um, should probably just kind of give up on him. But the family really believed that they could, not only could they raise him, but that he was a beloved child of God that could do, that could do amazing things. And so that was, that was the name of one of his, uh, he wrote an autobiography called My Left Foot about, about his life. And so um, I'll leave it here with this. But uh, in this story, again, Jesus has has broken all kinds of taboos and boundaries by going into the Gentile land, healing this woman, um, her child that was ill, um, and then again, healing this, this man that was deaf and mute. And as I was reading this story um, this past week, I was really thinking about um, some experiences I had recently over watching the football games over at Newport High School. And if you've been there, you know that the way the, the, way that the, um, the stands are is that there's like the track, the, the track for the field is right in front of the, the seats, the bleachers. So when you're sitting there watching the game, it can be a little distracting because people are always walking back and forth. And sometimes I kind of find myself people watching, you know, as like, you're like wondering who these people are. And it's a little distracting, but you see all kinds of people, right? Um, you, some, you see some people that are dressed very nicely, um, you see some people that are dressed a little bit more, you know, modestly or perhaps like they're not as well-to-do. And uh, it was very funny. This past, this past Friday night, there were like two cars that they had that they asked people to move or they were going to get towed. And like one was like a pickup truck. They were like, come get your pickup truck or the state police are going to tow it. 
And then the other one was, come get your BMW. <laughs> and I thought, wow, there's a lot of different people here. A lot of different people here at the game, right? So I didn't want to embarrass Emily either. I saw her walking by. I thought about yelling at her, but didn't want to embarrass her. But, uh, but my point is, as I was walking, as I was watching all these people go back and forth, I thought, would all these people feel welcome at a good shepherd if they walked in off the street? You know, um, would, they feel, would they feel like this is a place for them? You know, and in, in the reading that Judy did so nicely from the book of James, he, this is exactly who he's warning them about. He said, just remember, he said, when some fancy person in their BMW rolls up, you all are, are happy to have that person come to church. But when someone comes up in their pickup truck, not dressed very nicely, <laughs> you're a little bit less excited about that. And he's reminding them, just remember that we're all God's children. Um, God has created all of us in God's own image. Some of us are created a bit different from others. But that does not mean that Jesus cannot give us the healing and, and the grace and love that we need to lead the lives that God has, has created us for. So brothers and sisters, in this week to come, I want you to think about what taboos and boundaries God might be challenging you to step outside of, um, how God might be challenging you to see in someone else, to see in a person that is, has been written off as a good for nothing, a beloved child of God that is able to bless and, and gift the world with their unique talents and, and perspectives. I hope you have a great week. Stay dry, and may God bless you all. Amen. And now we will sing together a hymn. I'll invite you, if you wish to sing, to wear your mask and, and rise and join me in singing from the blue hymnal, hymn 738, Healer of Our Every Ill.
together with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enliven your church. Guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Bless and guide our bishops, Liz and Jim. We pray especially for the congregations of the Perry Conference as we prepare to assemble the, the Lutheran World Relief Health Kits next Sunday. Hear us, O God. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Watch over and keep safe those still recovering from the devastation of Hurricane Ida, as well as those affected by wildfire. We pray especially for those whose homes have suffered damage or ruin. We thank you for all first responders and rescue workers laboring to help those in need. Hear us, O oh God. Lord of all, you show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. As we celebrate, celebrate Labor Day this weekend, we thank you for those who fought and sacrificed for workers' rights and protections. And we thank you for those who, through their keen and honest labor, strive to better our communities, our state, and our nation. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Hear us, O God. Your healing touch gives restoration, fullness of life, and new possibilities. Send healing to those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Send opportunity to those who are unemployed or underemployed. Send perseverance and courage to those who are struggling in any way. We pray especially for Paul Klein, Tom and Lois Kaufman, Greg Gordon, Emily Reeser, and Gary Green. Hear us, O oh God. Trusting that God hears our prayers and gives us what we need, I invite the assembly to pray for any other people and concerns or to give thanks for blessings, either by saying these things out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. 
you embrace all who have died in, in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Give solace and peace to those who mourn. Lift up those who are bowed down and sustain them with your promise. We pray especially for the family of Dela Gomez and the family of Robbie Fitch. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, also and at this time, if you wish, I will invite you again if you uh, would like to make a donation for Hurricane Ida relief. Uh, this would be an appropriate time to do so. Of course, you may also do so after the service. And I'll invite you to come down if you'd like to make a donation. <laughs> Did everyone receive the uh, the, the, the cup and wafer? Just to make sure, we had a few stragglers. Just wanted to make sure everyone got that. Okay. Our service will continue with the offertory prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, 
We await his coming again to share with us this everla- the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to receive the bread and wine. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you.